Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. Today I'm going to talk about NABU, a multilingual graph-based neuro order verbalizer. My name is Diego Misalem. I belong to Paderborn University. This work was done with my colleagues Churak Ganesher from Manipal Institute of Technology in India and Tiago Ferreira from Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil and also with Professor Axel Nigonga from Paderborn University as well. I can start this presentation by telling you how much data is generated per day on the web. So it's more than 2.5 exabytes per day. So in order to extract knowledge from these data, this amount of data, we rely on natural language processing techniques. And also we extract structured data. In our case here, knowledge graphs, we need to make machines to expose, to infer and tell us the knowledge that is implicit on the knowledge graph. So how can we generate text from knowledge graphs? How can we make machine verbalize the knowledge? And this task is named natural language generation. In our case from our knowledge graphs, because also natural language generation includes inputs as images, videos, and other types of input. But here we have a resource, Albert Einstein resource from DBpedia. We can see that Albert Einstein resource has a birthplace, has a death place, has an RDF type. And here in the right side, you have an automatic generated text. So Albert Einstein was a scientist who worked in physics. He was born in Ulm and graduated from University of Zurich. Also, he died in Princeton and had under his guidance Ernest Kabusch Strauss. So what's the current drawback with these approach? So this approach, they rely majoritarily on English as a target language. Also, the graph structure is not fully exploited. Additionally, the fluency of the generated text is low when we receiving as an input subgraphs, large subgraphs. So, then it comes to our research question. How can we devise a natural language generation approach which takes into account the graph structure while you're generating text in more than one language? So the answer to this is NABU. We devised NABU as a encoder-decoder architecture which relies on graph attention neural networks as an encoder and transformer as a decoder. So here we can see the architecture of NABU below. So in the left side, we have the RDF graph as an input, then it goes to the graph attention neural networks, then goes through the transformer and then generate, generates English, German, and Russian as a text. So let's start cracking Nabu's architecture. So here we have the encode phase. So here in the left side, we have the original subgraph, and then we apply a reification strategy. So this reification cannot be confused with RDF reification. This strategy used a hypergraphs concept. So we created a hypergraph, most likely from the original graph. And this was done to avoid the parameter explosion phenomenon found in graph-based neural architecture. So the edges becomes parameters in graph neural-based architectures, models. And then when we have a large number of relations, which means edges, then we have the parameter explosion problem. And to avoid this, we relied on this verification strategy. So once we refined our knowledge graph, or I mean our subgraphs, then we decided to choose graph attention neural network. Why graph attention? So here we can see a uh, briefly comparison of a graph convolutional neural uh, architecture and also a graph a graph attention neural uh, model here in the right side. So here in the left, the, the, the convolutional, we have the edges. They are computed with um, non-parametric weight with a normalized function. And then we can see here, for example, computing the edge value of H1 from H2, so the V1, V2 can be seen here. So we have this weight. So one divided by the square root of the degree of the V1, in this case, 
h1 so we have one two three three degrees times degrees of v2 so we have one here in this case so one divided by square root of three and then while in the graph attention we rely on the tension mechanism to compute the weights so it gives more, uh, a higher score to more informative edges and nodes so to this end we have a, a better modeling of the graph so here we can see a single forward pass in abu so here in the left side we can see a node vector it contains the nodes of the graph so the source vector contains the subjects and the predicates so the nodes are as subjects and edges as predicates and then the destination the predicates and objects and then we have the label vector as um from the rdfs labels is called labels for example and then we combine them use as an input vector and then this uh, this input vector is used in the encoder and the decoder goes through the encoder the decoder so this is a single picture that we we can have in mind so after modeling after training our model then we need to evaluate and then we come with the following research questions how does our multilingual approach nabu compare with the state of the arts in english also is nabu able to generate bilingual text while modeling two language families to distinct families, for, because for example, you're focusing on English, German, and Russian. English and German belongs to the same family, while Russian becomes to another uh, belongs, sorry, to another family. And then we have the third: how accurate are the multilingual texts generated by Nabu? And in order to evaluate these research questions, we we our evaluation follows the threefold manner. So here we have the monolingual, and then the bilingual, and the multilingual steps. So here is the experimental setup, basically the hyperparameters that we used. We used the eight-headed multi-head attention mechanism, a bat size of 32, Adam optimized 001, embedding a hidden layer of 256. It showed the same results as 512, so we decided to go with the less uh size of the embeddings. The dropout we used the naive 0 0.3, the sentence length 50 and BPE 32,000. Uh, you know, it, these these number of uh, these numbers are based on previous work, and then we also decide to go with bean size five and rely on a supervised tokenized tokenizer named sentence piece to tokenize English, German, and Russian with the same tokenizer. <clears throat> For as a benchmarking data sets, we use web analogy data sets: the English version, the German version, and the Russian version. So the first task, monolingual task, is to measure the overall quality of NABU against the current state of the art. So we have three types of baseline. The baseline for English are the related works, previous work. But for German and Russian, we had to create one baseline because no, preview, no previous work was done. And as a benchmarking data, we use the three separately. So one for English. Uh, web analogy in English, web analogy in German, web analogy in Russian, and then we relied on blur meter and CHRF as automatic metrics. For the bilingual task to measure the, the overall quality of Nabu on language families, so we had to create a baseline as well. So we performed, a, uh, we create, a, we sorry, we modeled the vanilla transformer here, and the benchmarking data sets, we have two because we combined the web analogy in English plus the web analogy in German and then web analogy in English plus web analogy in Russian. And we thought we used the same metrics, blood meter and CHRF. So the third task, the multilingual one, we measured the quality of NABU on English, German and Russian at once, which means generating multilingual text. To this end, we also created a vanilla transformer baseline because no previous work was done. And the benchmark, we used English, German, we combined English, German, and Russian. So the metrics were the same, blur meter and CHRF. So let's start talking about the results. For the first question, um, Nabu outperforms the related words on English. So this is very good. It shows that the graph attention plus transformer modeled correctly the graph and was capable of generating good text. 
Well, also, we performed evaluation to HRF, which no previous work was, uh, I mean, carried out this metric. And continue answering the first, we analyzed the German and Russian results. So separately. So we have three models in English, German, and Russian. So Nabu, um, with the graph attention, was able to outperform the transformer baseline. And then we go to the second research question and then shows that Nabu generates good bilingual results. We can see that Nabu for English and German outperformed the transformer baseline in all metrics. While in German, uh, sorry, while in Russian, Nabu outperforms only in, on CHRF. However, CHRF is the metric which correlates best with the human evaluation. Therefore, we can say that Nabu was capable of modeling language from distinctive families. In the third research question, we can say that Nabu presents good multilingual results. Nabu with graph attention and transformer outperformed the baseline transformer in all metrics. After evaluating automatically using automatic metrics, we performed error analysis and human evaluation to bring some discussion to analyze the results. So we could see that, okay, Nabu performed, I mean, achieve, achieves consistent results across languages. However, the possessive is still a source of error. So the genitive in German decreased substantially the results for uh, performing the possessive of the entities then it decreased and another was the similar predicates with similar subjects for making the core reference for example here in this case Albert Einstein death place USA Michael Jackson death place USA and then Albert Einstein birthplace you Ulm and Michael Jackson birthplace Gary we can see uh we could see sorry that in the verbalization of course with more triples but while you're having these triples together in the same subgraph, we could see that the core reference Einstein was generated. Einstein was born in Gary, so mixing. And then we think this uh, is related to our reification strategy, although we avoid the parameter explosion, brought up this problem. So we are thinking, we plan to investigate this further. And also we could see that the multilingual model improved the generalization of unseen entities, so it's pretty good. However, the unseen entities on Russian were worse than on German and English because of the Cyrillic alphabet. Okay, as a summary, we can see that Nabu achieved 66.21 blur on English, so it, it's the new state of the art of for the RGF to test text task. Also, Nabu can serve as a baseline for further research as a multilingual uh, baseline. For example, it achieved 56.04 on Blur and also good results on Meter and CHRF as well. So consistent results across languages, that's one of the most important thing. And what's next? We plan to apply subgraphs in the encoder side, also exploit all the neural, net, neural network architectures and also investigate different knowledge graph embeddings of course, extend Nabu to other languages. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. And please refer to our GitHub to try out Nabu and also our website to keep you posted with our research. So thank you.